What's up, quitters? Okay, today I am super excited because we are talking about pizza. And I know what you're thinking. Keto pizza crust is terrible. And I agree with you. Most keto pizza crusts are cauliflowery and they're soggy. And the second you put something on them, they just kind of flop down. They don't make you feel like you're eating pizza. It's diet pizza. Well, I want to give you pizza back. I want it to be exactly what you're craving, and it is. It's nice and brown and crispy on the bottom. It's doughy on the inside, and it's super, super simple. Come check this out. I have three teenagers, you guys, three of them, and all of them love this pizza. They do not think it's keto, and they were shocked when I told them. So let me show you a keto pizza crust recipe that will blow your mind. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna mix our dry ingredients into this bowl right here. Now for dry ingredients, we've got three quarters of a cup of almond flour, and that's the super fine almond flour. We've got half a teaspoon of baking powder. Doesn't wanna come out of there. And then we have about half a teaspoon of each of your desired spices. Now here's the thing, I'm using just Italian seasoning, but if you're doing something like a Mexican style pizza or a barbecue pulled pork pizza, that's a lot of peas. But anyways, if you're doing that, you probably don't wanna add Italian spices. You probably just wanna put in some salt and pepper. So let me throw those in there really quick. And then we're just gonna mix that up and then we're gonna add our cheese. And this is one cup of grated mozzarella. Super, super simple. We're gonna mix it up really, really nice and good. We want it all to be kind of, all the dry ingredients to kind of get in there with the cheese so that it's a nice, just a nice mix. All right. Now I like to put this into a pie dish, just a glass pie dish before I put it into the microwave. So we're just gonna lay this out nice and even. Once you get the hang of this, it's just so easy. Seriously, so easy. My kids know how to make them. They're awesome. What I like to do usually is I like to put like, do like three or four on a Sunday and put them in like, um, what's it called? Gallon size freezer bags. Put them in the freezer and then when the kids get home from school, they can like put their toppings on and just kind of throw it in the microwave. Not the microwave, the oven. The oven, not the microwave. All right, so check this out. This is gonna go in the microwave for about 32 seconds. Why 32? It's because it's better than 30. So here we go. While that's in the microwave, let me show you this next step. Now we're gonna take room temperature cream cheese. This is about three tablespoons. You don't wanna get it right out of the fridge and use it, so let it sit out for a little bit. Put that in there, nice handy dandy food processor, and then one egg in there with it. Now we're not gonna over mix this because it'll get foamy and it won't be what we want. We just wanna do a couple pulses on here just to kinda get it combined. All right, so just, like I said, a couple pulses. You don't want to over mix this, okay? So it should be about like that. Here, take a look at the inside. See how it's not totally mixed in? It's still a little bit chunky, but that's fine for what we're gonna be doing with it. So let's get the dry ingredients out of the microwave. That's about how it should look. I wish you guys could smell this right now because it smells phenomenal. It already smells like pizza in here. Okay, so now we're gonna put this back in the bowl. It's gonna be not fully melted. You can kind of see that texture on there on what you're gonna be looking for. And then we're gonna add in this lovely eggy, cream, cheesy goodness. And this is where we're gonna get our hands a little bit dirty, obviously. Now while I'm mixing this up, use your hands, get in there. While I'm mixing this up, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a warning. When you're going to the store and you're looking for a pizza crust, let's say, I know that a lot of you have probably gotten fooled by the cauliflower pizza crust thing. I've had a lot of clients say, oh, look what I found at the store. Turn it around and look at the ingredients. I can guarantee you they've added a starch and I can guarantee you that it's probably close to the same amount of carbs as a regular pizza. So don't be fooled by that. They're gonna advertise that it's cauliflower pizza, even if it's not all cauliflower pizza. So don't trust labels, check the nutrition facts in the back before you get you know mixed up in that. All right, so that's what it looks like so far. It's just an ooey gooey ball of, yeah, 
just gloppy, but this is what you're gonna, your little end product right here is gonna look like. All right, so now I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna show you what to do next. I think I should probably wash my hands. The oven is preheating to 390 and while we're waiting for that to heat up, let's go ahead and shape our dough. So we've got that gooey, lovely cheese ball here. We're gonna drop that down onto parchment paper. Now I've got parchment paper on the bottom and then I'm gonna use freezer paper on the top. Wait, I messed up, hold on. This has to go back in. Before that, we gotta put olive oil down. <laughs> okay, you should probably put the olive oil down first. So let's try this, take two. All right, olive oil down on the parchment paper. Just spread it around, doesn't have to be a lot. I'm using parchment paper on the bottom and freezer paper on the top. Now I'm using freezer paper mostly because I have freezer paper. Remember that can't go in the oven because yeah, can't go in the oven. So that can only be used on the top half of this. So we got our olive oil down. Now we're gonna get this glorious dough ball, plop that down, and then put the freezer paper on. Now we're gonna use the glossy side so it doesn't stick. I like freezer paper too because it doesn't get quite as like wrinkly. We're gonna flatten that down with our hand just until we get like a nice round shape. And then I'm gonna catch it with my hip just like the tortilla video and we're gonna roll this out. Now we can use the weight of the rolling pin for most of it. It's really super simple. I have painter's tape again on this rolling pin as well because I make a lot of these pizzas and it just makes it easier to kind of get the same thickness. Do what you want here. You want a thin pizza? make a thin pizza. You want a thicker crust, make a thicker crust. This is all you, but once you have this recipe down, you're gonna be using it a lot. It's amazing. We use it very, very often. Weekend pizza nights and stuff like that. All right, we're gonna finish this up. Let's see where we are. It's looking pretty good. Kind of came off the parchment paper a little bit, but you can kind of see the direction that I'm going here. Now, shaping it is really simple too. We're just gonna take a lid, just some lid, any lid. We're gonna put it around the pizza and just start working it into a circle. Really, really, really easy. Now, before I go any further with this pizza, I want you guys to know too that I am not a huge advocate of getting all of your, um, your fat calories for the day from cheese. A lot of people lean to that when they're thinking about being fat fueled, like, oh, I'm just gonna get all my fat macros in using cheese. That is not what I want you to do. This is like a special occasion thing, like a Friday or a Saturday night thing. But I know there's a lot of cheese in it, I just want you to know that ahead of time, that this isn't a daily thing, but it's a great treat to have every now and then. I believe cheese should be more of an accent and not like the staple of your diet. All right. We're just gonna round that out a little bit. See, now we have a nice round shape. And if you want, even at this point, you can put the freezer paper back on top. All right, let's work out all of these thick edges. Go ahead and pick this back up. Catch it with your hip. This is obviously for a bit of a thinner crust. I like that thin, crispy crust. All right, the grand reveal. Yahoo, we have pizza crust. Well, not yet, we still have to cook it. Now, if you want to at this point, get your lid back, put it back on there, work those edges out a little bit. I love it, it looks perfect. And it already smells good. Okay, so now we're gonna put this in the oven. Remember, freezer paper does not go in the oven. So this is the parchment paper. We're gonna put this in the oven for 10 minutes at 390. Just 10 minutes. Remember, we have to put it back in the oven when we have the toppings on it. So we don't wanna crisp it up too much. We just wanna get it to be done. While that's in the oven, let's talk about pizza toppings because that's like the most fun that you can have with pizza is what you choose to put on top of it. The problem with keto is that you get stuck in a box where you're eating the same things every day. I wanna encourage you to be creative with your flavors. Be creative with the fats that you're using to fuel your body. 
Use this crust for a Thai chicken pizza. Use it for a Mexican style pizza with cilantro and avocado or a barbecued pulled pork pizza. And if you're saying, okay, well, barbecue sauce isn't keto, check out my barbecue sauce recipe in the link below. It's amazing, way better than any regular store-bought barbecue sauce. I guarantee it. But since we're sticking with something super traditional today, then let's talk about just regular bread sauce. Now what I used here is just a store-bought marinara, but the key is, is that there's no sugar in the ingredients. It says sugar in the label, but it's not in the ingredients, and that's the difference. So there's only three net carbs per half a cup. This is naturally occurring sugar. All right, so you don't need to stress as much about it. It's done. Okay, I am really, really excited right now, like legitimately excited. I cannot wait for you guys to see this pizza. So I'm gonna get out of the oven and with my Thanos glove, did you get a close up of the, okay, anyways. Let me get this out of here so you guys can see what this looks like. You guys are gonna be so unbelievably excited to try this. If I can get it out of the oven. There we go, here it comes, all right. Check that out, look at that, it is gorgeous. Now it's not completely brown all the way yet because we still have to add the toppings and put it back in. Let me shut the oven. All right, so let's add the toppings to this. This is gonna be fun. Just really simple, I'm not getting fancy right now. This is all about the crust. So we're gonna add this glorious tomato sauce. I just want you guys to see what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Now I'm not much of a I don't know, an edges person. I like to take it all the way to the end. I am really hungry. I wish you guys, I wish there was like a scratch and sniff button so you guys could smell this. All right, we're gonna get it all the way to the edges because I want every bite to be cheesy, saucy goodness. I really want pizza right now. Okay, now we're gonna add Mozzarella. Now remember what I said earlier, you guys, get creative with this. This is just traditional. This is just, you know, when you think of pizza, what do you think of? Mozzarella cheese and pizza sauce, but do whatever you want with this. Because this crust just, yeah, it's just a whole thing. It's delicious. Like I told you before too, if it can get past my kids, it can get past anybody. Guarantee you your kids will love this. All right, so what the heck, let's just finish it off. Everybody loves cheese. And now for the tomatoes. Get that all around. Look at it, it's already, oh, I love this. This is amazing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Glorious. And then the basil. Okay, so now we're gonna put it directly on the rack. Okay, you can see what I did here. I just slid it off the parchment paper onto the back of this cookie sheet, and now we're gonna get this in the oven. Now the key here, like I said before, is making sure that it's directly on the rack. So we're gonna pull this out a little bit and slide this onto the rack. This is probably the hardest part about doing this pizza crust, is just getting it on the rack. Now, look closely. I made sure that this and this, the edges, weren't hanging over so they can't go down here and melt and you know what I'm talking about. All you moms out there that have made DiGiorno's for your kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're gonna put this in, remember it's already cooked, we just wanna melt the cheese and kinda crisp up the bottom a little bit. So probably like eight minutes max, but it's really kind of what you want, how crispy you want your crust. So we'll come back to that in a couple of minutes and check it out. I can't wait for you to see the finished product. It's like, ah, uh, it's divine. You're gonna love it. Pizza is done. Let's pull it out of the oven. You guys are gonna, oh, just look, just come here. Just look at that. It's gorgeous. All right, so I just have a cutting board. We're just gonna pull this out and slide it onto the cutting board. You can use your finger here if you want to. Just bring it on out, bam. We are good to go. All right, let's cut into it so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Do you hear that? I hope you can hear that. That crunch. Look at this. It's so good. This right here, that's pizza. That golden brown on the outside. 
It smells like heaven in my kitchen right now. Slice this up. Does it get any better than that? That is pizza perfection right there. And nobody's gonna know that it's keto. I would take a big bite right now, but it's a little bit too hot for that. I want you guys to share in the comments below what you like to put on your pizza. Share your favorite pizza recipes with me. I would love to hear from you. And let me just go through the whole thing right now. Like and subscribe. Please, please, please come back and join me for more great recipes and amazing keto tips. I've been doing this for three years and I know what I'm talking about. And of course, follow me on social media. Check out my free grocery swapping ebook. It's down below, click on the link. It's totally free and it's got some amazing tips in it. And my website, is there anything else? No, that's it. All right, I'll see you guys back here really, really soon. Enjoy your pizza. Talk to you later.